If you've attended a session already, you've been introduced to the three stages of financial wellness. If this is not familiar, make plans to join an Intro to Money Nav session offered at the beginning of every month. You can also view our Money Milestones workshop, which explores the three stages in detail. Today's session is focused on balancing saving and spending. In other words, budgeting. This topic is best positioned in the first stage, financial safety. If you feel like you're just treading water when it comes to your money, or you feel like money controls you more than you control your money, maybe managing debt is something that keeps you up at night or worries about how to repair your damaged credit. If this sounds like you, budgeting is a great next step to take. Budgeting helps you get your arms around your money resources and spending habits, and with this info, you can redirect resources and make decisions that get you headed in the right direction. While budgeting or creating a spending plan is at the top of the list in the financial safety stage, there are other important things to focus on as well. Things like establishing an emergency savings account, cutting expenses, and improving your credit score. Our Money Milestones course takes a deep dive into these steps as well as the other two stages of financial well-being. But today we're going to focus on creating a spending plan. After this session, you should be able to fill out this chart with your own ideal spending targets. This chart, which will be included in your workbook, highlights the main expense categories, including housing, food and utilities, insurance, emergency savings, retirement savings, debt payments, and general spending. For most folks, housing and utilities will be the biggest slice of your budget and will represent 20 to 40% of your spending. Insurance is another important financial safety component and will range from 5 to 15%, depending on factors like whether your employer provides coverage, how much life insurance you have, whether you have full or basic car insurance. And like most things, insurance is something you tackle in stages. Ensuring you have basic coverage first and then adding more coverage as your financial situation improves. Having a spending plan helps you evaluate how much you can afford to spend now and helps you stay on track for adding more later. Emergency savings is an often overlooked but mission critical spending category. Because there is no immediate gratification that comes from having an emergency savings account, it's an easy item to pass over for more rewarding spending like vacations and entertainment. But if you remember only one thing from this session, I hope it's this. The single most important thing you can do for your present and future financial well-being is to maintain an emergency savings account. The stage one goal is to set aside $1,000, but eventually you'll want to have somewhere between three and 12 months of your essential monthly living costs set aside. This plan for surviving life's curveballs like a medical emergency, an accident, a job loss, goes a long way for your peace of mind but it also helps you make the most of your money by ensuring you won't have to raid retirement savings or take on credit debt when the unexpected happens. Building a 12 month savings buffer can take a long time. Most of us should aim to save 10 to 20% of our monthly income in our emergency savings account. Perhaps the only money term worse than budgeting is debt. But for most folks, debt is a reality, whether it's credit card debt, student loans, or just debt required to deal with life. Making debt payments typically chews up as much as 25% of a person's monthly income. Even the most financially disciplined among us need to cut loose and have fun sometimes. And that's really the point of budgeting, to manage financial resources in a way that allows you to responsibly plan for the road ahead while still enjoying the stops along the way. 15 to 30% is a typical range for spending money in most budgets. Speaking of the road ahead, retirement is likely the biggest savings goal you will have, and it's probably the one thing you can't take a loan for. Picture this, you don't have as much saved as you should, but you don't wanna work forever either. So you retire, planning to get a loan from your friendly local bank officer. The first thing they'll ask is, 
how much income you're earning, at which point you'll explain you've retired and you're no longer receiving a paycheck. They'll say, no problem, and ask to see your list of assets, at which point you'll explain you haven't accumulated much in the way of assets, which is why you're here for a loan. And my guess is at this point, the friendly loan officer will say, no income, no assets, no loan. This is, of course, tongue in cheek, but I think you get the point. Saving for retirement is a critical part of a good financial stewardship plan and typically requires setting aside 10 to 20 percent of your income. And the longer you save, the less you have to save. So getting started early is the key to making it easy to save for retirement. And retirement may not be your only money goal. Perhaps you want to save for education for yourself or someone else, or maybe you're dreaming of a vacation home or taking up an expensive hobby. Goal-based savings requires discipline, a long-term focus, and about 5 to 15 percent of your monthly income. If you're following along, you might be saying, hang on a minute, this math doesn't add up. And that's the tough reality of the financial safety money stage. We have to prioritize to allocate money to the most important things. Then we need to revisit our spending plan as our financial situation changes so we can check bigger goals off our list. This is the hierarchy of financial needs. While not intended to be an exhaustive list of money goals, it does give you an idea of how to prioritize competing and seemingly endless demands for your dollars. Notice how many of the goals repeat, but build on one another. For example, the first time you see emergency savings, the goal is to save $1,000. But higher up, you'll find emergency savings again with a three-month goal. Similarly, the first time you see retirement savings, the goal is to save enough to be eligible for your full employer match. But then we want to save enough to be on track and eventually aim to reach the maximum level set by the IRS annually. All that to say, you can't do everything right away. But each thing you do takes you one rung higher on the hierarchy, closer to reaching goals and experiencing financial freedom. So how can you tackle the process of building your own prioritized savings plan? We suggest three simple steps. Keep in mind, though, that just because they're simple, doesn't mean they're easy. Budgeting requires discipline and motivation, but keep your eye on the prize. Taking control of your money is the road to financial freedom. The first step is to determine your fixed expenses. List your essential expenses like housing and utilities, car payments, basic insurance costs, etc. Step two is to calculate your average variable expenses. These are things like some utility bills that vary from month to month, groceries, gas costs. If you do most of your spending on a credit or debit card, you can look back on previous statements and come up with an average number. If you can't review past spending, simply start a journal of your spending and keep it going for two to three months. This is also a good exercise to repeat a few times each year so you can capture seasonal changes or bills that come less frequently, like those app subscriptions that are only billed once each year. The third step is to track your discretionary spending. This is the hardest of the three and the step most likely to lead to feelings of guilt and shame. But resist the temptation to beat yourself up or even worse, cast your budgeting efforts aside. Instead, keep in mind that your goal is to be in control of where your money goes, ensuring your hard-earned dollars are directed to things that matter and the things that bring the most joy and satisfaction to your life. Here again, if you do most of your spending on a card, you can look back by reviewing statements. Otherwise, save receipts, log spending. Again, repeating this a few times each year will help you fine tune your spending plan targets. That brings us back to our spending plan. With your three steps completed, you'll be able to compare your actual spending to the typical ranges we just reviewed. Now it's time to look for places where you can make cuts and then set a target for yourself. If you're right on track, congrats. Time to consult the financial hierarchy. Do you have your money priorities in order? If your insurance coverage is inadequate, it might be time to shift some dollars you're spending in other areas to ensure your insurance coverage needs are met.
Finally, if you're lucky enough to be under budget, well, check the financial hierarchy and set a new goal. Keep in mind those progressive goals like emergency savings and retirement. There's always more we can make our money do for us. With your spending plan in place, focus on other key areas of the financial safety stage. Things include emergency savings, health savings accounts, and spending discipline activities like defining self-imposed rules for dipping into your emergency savings and making some honest assessments about the difference between a financial need and a financial want. Again, the Money Milestones course cover covers this in more detail. Budgeting is about as exciting as visiting the dentist every six months, but it's just as critical to your financial well-being as flossing is to your dental health. You can get by without it, but you're probably inviting pain and discomfort along the way. But budgeting doesn't have to be an exercise in limitation either. It's not about denying yourself things. It's about making the most of the resources you have so you can keep moving toward the things that make you smile. Set small goals and celebrate the milestones reached along the way.